sir. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tirupa Taya. I come from Andhra Pradesh. Sorry? It's going? Yeah. Power it off. Uh, my name is Tirupa Taya. I come from Andhra Pradesh. And um, uh, for your information, Andhra Pradesh has been the first state to bring a legislation on uh, participatory irrigation management in India in 1997. Um, and of course, over the period of time, many states have taken it, adapted it, or brought out their own uh, acts. Um, what I would uh, like to present in this is uh, two parts. One part is uh, uh, what has been recent success, some initiatives which we have taken. Uh, it's not that it was a big bang and then we did. It's not like that. It's like picking, though may not be running 100 meter sprint, but may be preparing for a marathon. And part two is uh, uh, there are not many challenges ahead of us. Uh, we believe that uh, what we have done is very, like, very little. A lot of issues are be before us, and uh, we need to address them. And uh, okay. I would like to, uh, in brief, yeah, still it is going on. No, no, Hello. That is, that is on your software. It has nothing to do with the projector. I think uh, I. It's auto slideshow. Uh, as I said, <coughs> this point is done. Uh, following the you know, commitments of establishing such institutions is very important as part of the government. And um, also, uh, unlike transfer, there are two concepts. Management transfer and joint management. We are into a joint management, which means that we are always with the farmers' organizations. We have never left them. So it's imperative that you have a very strong, intensive capacity building initiative to do that. Also, over a period of time, how a hundred-year-old regimental department gets attuned to work with people. It's not such an easy task. You know, researchers and, and NGOs might say. Uh, very strongly, but it's not such a, an easy task. But whatever is happening is quite encouraging. Um, certain tools which we developed in recent years, which would uh, empower the world user associations much further. Also, empowerment in, in terms of uh, financial uh, autonomy or money availability to them. And working on issues like we, we just heard on what is efficiency tax collection. And uh, also identifying avenues for them to work outside government. Like uh, you said, externalities need not be uh, political always. The farmers' organization itself can be externality to itself uh, as a force to the government. So that example is also there. Uh, this is the structure we have in minor irrigation, single tire structure for basically small tanks. In medium irrigation, up, and we have two tire. Uh, the water user association project committee and in the major a three tier structure is similar to uh, if you would like to compare to the Panchayatra system. Um, we started very large and it's more than 10,000 uh, water user associations, but it is not universal. Any irrigation source which irrigates less than 100 hectares, we don't have a system. For example, 70,000 minor irrigation tanks in AP, we don't have, we have only 10,000 water user associations. So it's not actually a very big big bang, some small big bang. <laughs> Elections, um, I must say that uh, so far we have done three times, which is a very good indicator as far as I can mention, though we are one and a half year behind now. Actually we were supposed to complete the election already last year, but we have one year more extension. So 2000, early 2013 we are expecting and um, also on the capacity building, I would like to mention that this is one big area, as uh, Imi has also pointed out. It's a big area. For a state which has uh, 10,000 water user associations, 
you have a Valmi with uh, 10 people or 15 people, expect them to provide handholding support is absolutely crazy. In another way, we brought this to the notice of government and government was uh, really very responsive to this. And today, under Valantari, we have 18 field training centers with attached to each superintendent engineer. Don't look at superintendent engineer as somebody who is the call is the villain. He may be the hero tomorrow. We don't know. So we have set up a field training center attached to him because the superintendent engineer is more free compared to an executive engineer. He is more a, a free man who provides supervision and looks at technical matters. So he can provide uh, 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 inputs at the gap. So 18 centers are working and 10 more are in the offering. Each center is uh, like this, a uh, training hall with all equipment provided and two professionals, one from sociology background, one from engineering background. Both of them, mind you, are funded by the state government, not any project, external aid, by the state government under the plan scheme. That's very important when government shows the commitment towards uh, uh, capacity building. We have a large number of participatory modules which are developed, which are used for uh, uh, learning by doing method. Another tool which we developed last three years is called the participatory action plan. We have developed a workbook, a small Telugu written workbook, which has got 11 parameters, simple parameter like what is the area notified in your WA, what is actually irrigated. And mind you, when we did this first time in 2009, it was a shock to them. They didn't know what is the area notified. They never saw the notification. 14 years after the notification. So, there's uh, a Actually, from every season, before the tariff in May, we start the workshops. Each WA level, all the uh, territory constituency members, market authorities sit together, go through this workbook. And there is a sharing workshop at the distributor level, followed by a circle level. Later comes to Arantari, it is uh, cleaned and analyzed, and we generate GIS based maps, sent back to the uh, CADA, which is the controlling authority, back to the circles, to the executive engineers. Because these are uh, useful as management tools, as I will show you one example. This is the book, workbook, which, uh, and these are the examples of. Uh, Exercise. And uh, as of now, more than 3,000 water user associations, last four years, every season, they do this exercise. And the results are, you know, really amazing. For example, uh, uh, on the performance side, performance side, we have completed water use uh, efficiency study for 20 projects funded by OWR and um, followed this with the participatory action plan exercise. Already, I will show you some graphs, already 5 to 10 percent of uh, water use efficiency. Because you must mind that when I say water use efficiency, I am not meaning uh, anything. I am meaning the unit water, how much area it is irrigated. I will go into uh, productivity of water later, but then even this much minimum uh, is not there. So we are beginning at uh, almost uh, no, no report. Tax collection, sometimes when we were about 60 crores. Last year, we have 120 crores. <coughs> yeah, the overall AP, overall tax collection is around 62 percent. That is more, that is 90 plus. It is, it is the water user association. See, 62, state average. Now? Yeah, now, doesn't it? It was 60 crores, it has come to 120 crores. And plough bank, though there is a problem, I will mention in the challenges, there is a problem, but plough bank is happening. This is the GIS map I was mentioning. Once the data comes to Valamtari, we analyze it and uh, develop like this. These are the DC boundaries, uh, and then what you are 1 to 221 in this circle. And you can see the color combination. We can show 26 WAs, the area indicator has come down compared to last year. So this goes to the opening engineer. When he reviews with the assistant executive engineers or with the water user association, he can find out what actually is a technical problem, managerial problem, or anything else. So this kind of uh, maps every season we generate for 11 parameters, like taxes, like water use efficiencies. Also, we go down. We can do this up to WA level. Actually, we visualize the boundaries of WA to the approximate. I 
exactly like the minimum but to the approximate. But you can see uh, the kind of uh, uh, relation between the service duty or we call it what is efficiency, how we can see the But I am not saying that this is final, but we have to see over a long period of time, maybe 10 years, 15 years, to be able to really. This is hectic for the uh, uh, for MCFP of work. For MCFP of work. Actually, Kada has given a norm to as a base, like standard. He said, one MCFP water, 6 acres per and one MCFP water, 30 liters I. And today, I have more than two thirds WS who are doing more than six. So now I am asking Commissioner Kada, you please raise that. Let's make it seven or eight, something like that. And this is uh, another tool which we have developed called self-assessment by WS. Because um, in any participatory mode, like uh, Madam from Arkham was saying, that we must believe the basis for participatory management has to be trust. If there is no trust, everybody has to be done by somebody else, and then that somebody likes added and forces something, government of India says, no, 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 no. I mean, this kind of thing, there is no end. So there has to be trust. And uh, there is a self assessment tool on four parameters managerial, financial, institutional and uh, work oriented and um, especially if you look at systems uh, maintenance they have been empowered up to 5 lakh rupees no engineer is required in the sense work has to be technically given but in execution no engineer is required they can do it locally by nominations that kind of powers are given but once work is done technically engineer will come advise basically record and all that. Another very important thing that has come out recently is general irrigation advisory boards um, are, are really driven by MPs, MLAs and, and ministers. And these people, they found that they don't have voice. It is their work, but somebody else is taking decisions. So they came out with very indigenous way that before the irrigation advisory board, when the collector is the, as convener, he sends the uh, collector is the chairman, he sends the notification they hold a pre-meeting and they come up with a resolution that these are the issues we want and give it in advance to the collector. That's it. So the agenda is set. There is no scope for people to play around and play politics, etc. It has been working excellent, like in Nizam Sagar project, in Nabu Nagar, in RDS project, Jurala project. Excellent way to work. So two minutes. Yeah. I am coming to the part two. Part one, some of the tools I mentioned, like just to recap, like we have done the workbook. Uh, participatory action plan as a process and using self-assessment. And these are uh, actually driving the performance of the ways. And the challenges, though I am trying to group them into technical, managerial, institutional, but when I mention I won't go in that order, I just go like that. One, still there is over dependence on irrigation engineers. I am being very frank, being in the department, because as I mentioned, after 14 years, if I go to the WA, I ask them, please show me the, uh, the canal layout which serves, serves you the water. It doesn't have the map. How many GP, how many outlets are there? It doesn't know. What is the list of uh, voters in each PC member? It doesn't know. It is not there. Because it's still there, they are saying, okay, my engineer is there, sir. Our AE will take care, sir. Please ask him. So, it's kind of over dependence is still there. Maybe we are helping or we are assisting, whatever. Um, secondly, the handing over of this basic things we have done as a campaign during this uh, workshop. Every time we give, last time we gave, they lost it. Again we give. Okay, let us give 10 times. Doesn't matter, two sheets, one map and one outlet of the pipes. That's all. One rupee for Jeroxing. <laughs> Systems to fund flow, as somebody said, uh, Sachin said. Uh, there is a problem. Now we moved it to Chief Minister, five years with him, saying that uh, money has to be retained at the source, not cloud in back. Though we are plowing back 90%, it is saying in time. Um, more skill building, especially we are expecting a lot of things from Water User Association, but what kind of, uh, in terms of skills we have given? 14 years I saw that he can't measure with a tape, 10 meters we have to work done. Then what kind of empowerment the engineer is doing? So I have now put up a mechanism that in so many years, so many skills should be known by the WAs. How to write a book, how to take a measurement, how to read from the SSR, what is the artwork per cubic meter value. These are minimum things after all. Otherwise, what empowerment is there? 
Uh, we have set up a work tracking system because people will not know whether their work is uh, submitted for payment or not payment, they don't know. They can go today to the website and see the work, their work whether it is loaded, sent to payment or not, they can follow. Though you may question how many can see your website, but many can see the website. Um, continuous handholding is required. I think we have we have uh, underplayed this need to just thought that uh, set up PIM and then uh, they will take care kind of thing. Maybe we thought that uh, uh, it's it's not at all engineering, but uh, I would like to combine social and engineering. It is engineering. We can't say it is not engineering. We have to combine these two. And large number of registers are supposed to be maintained by them, but they don't know how to write. We have example of central groups. We have put their volunteers to write. Why can't we put volunteers in case of the earliest to write? So these are issues which uh, we are raising now in Andhra Pradesh. Because we, we have examples next door to us, which we have done ourselves. Um, there is a great role in such areas for um, CSOs and NGOs. Also, Democratic decentralization within the MBAs. There are four subcommittees supposed to be there to show. But then uh, mostly they are on paper. Actually, two year months PRMs came from here to me as uh, MPS, and I, I asked them to do this study. And the study is ready, and you know, they are on paper. Actually, subcommittees are not there. It's like subpunch one person. So, unless you support that decentralization, it's not possible. Again, that requires intensive hand holding. Again, very fertile area for. CSOs and others to help initiate uh, I think this will be the last slide. Convergence between irrigation and agriculture. In our act, we have got competent authorities irrigation, but most of the time we forget that irrigation engineer only knows when to open the canal, when to close the canal. He doesn't know anything more than that. Please don't expect him. What is the crop requirement for paddy? You ask irrigation engineer, he will not know. What is the critical growth stage of paddy? When what has to be here, he will not know. But who will know then? Then agriculture man has to work in tandem with them. So government of AP issued orders that agriculture officer is the competent authority for crop production. So together they two will work with the WA now, saying uh, given this kind of a water, somebody said you go to the reservoir, see water and plant. So that kind of work will happen now. First time uh, after uh, this act came, recently we had each district, all the agriculture officers, irrigation engineers training program, first time. And they said, what took you like James Bond movie says, what took you so long, why did you train, and train us before? What is the efficiency? Basically, as Madam said, there is a problem. I, I think we don't honor anything on the irrigation system. It is most abused, I can tell you. If uh, the notification says it is a wet crop, there is no water, how do I cultivate wet? Because all ID crop is converted into wet. Generally at the head of the project it is ID. But if you go there as you show the map, all the head ends are wet. Then how do I get water? I abuse it so much and uh, uh, everybody says somebody has to build the cat. Problem is that uh, unless, and, and we are seeing today already, but then that will be too late. We have complaints from farmers saying after giving irrigation, you have spoiled our crop, uh, our plants. From Nandia, Kandur district, they have come to us that after irrigation, we were very happy without irrigation, you have spoiled our lands. Now I can't grow cotton, I can't grow chilies, I can't grow anything except well. I mean, this is going to be a big growing issue. Unless we really address that cropping patterns and irrigation is going to help them or change them. Uh, so again related to climate change, I would like to show that the WA norms were set up in 2008-9 uh, and uh, to improve. The last point is about women. If you see the uh, watermark behind, this is the logo for the PIM in Andhra Pradesh. Each man is alternated with the women. But in the WAs, there is not even single woman. Because they don't own land. Unless very rarely, very rarely they are title owners. Because the constitution of this WA says should be title owner. So I am now asking the government to look at it. What is this? You are the leader in the SSG movement in the country and in this WA, how can you do like this? And what are the ways to bring in women into? Otherwise, this is a very serious uh, 
I hope in all other acts also it's a serious act and because we are going to land ownership plan, the involvement of uh, personal land. Yes, Wait, over. Thank you. Over, over. One minute. Uh, today, uh, sir, please note, today irrigation departments have 80% people in construction, only 20% in operation maintenance. How do you expect irrigation systems to perform? We have proven this, shown it. And this year, government of AP has given 1,000 engineers to the field. And next year, again, another 1,000 are coming to operation maintenance. So, most of your staff are in the construction. How can you ensure your systems perform? So, it has to move. People have to go to the field. Oindam is not glamorous. Yeah. A construction is glamorous. Oindam is not glamorous. Uh, the, the existing staff are trained in uh, basic engineering. What they require are in PAM skills, very hardly PAM skills are given. Especially growing areas like precision farming, irrigations, huge thousands of hours for uh, systems are coming. But in this, uh, they are not trained. You can't expect them to, to run them. Uh, multidisciplinary skills are required. Uh, this year we have 50 agriculture engineers, uh, 60 electrical engineers, because otherwise generally they are civil engineers in water sources. But we are changing now. Large number of agricultural, electrical, instrumentation, dams, instrumentation is such an important task. Uh, you expect general person to do it. So those kind of things are uh, much needed in the, in the management. I would like to just close saying, that participatory irrigation management we started and uh, maybe we are in the second phase of learning, I would say, and a uh, lot of challenges we identified which are uh, to be addressed and uh, I hope uh, as we go, uh, of what is required is the principle of trust, as I mentioned, if you, work, you are working in joint management partnership, you must have trust, belief, and then uh, you must give everything, so you don't hide anything. I, I hide the map, I won't tell you, that is the end of the PA. Thank you very much.